Hi, I'm Venus, and thank you for checking out my podcast today. You know what? It's been a little over a year since the first episode launched, and I'm really proud of how far it's come in such a short time. My hope is that I can continue to be able to share my love for this beautiful and sexy relationship dynamic. If you haven't already, please visit venuscuckoldress.com and you'll find a wealth of helpful resources, some sexy stories, and of course, the Venus Vault. The Venus Vault is a look into my encounters from behind the bedroom door. And now on venuscuckoldress.com, there's a shop where you can buy merchandise. So whether it's something that's funny, sweet, sexy, or totally discreet, there'll be something for everyone. All right, now let's get started so you can enjoy this episode. Here we go. On this episode of the Venus Cuckoldress podcast. If you love interracial cuckolding or you're curious about it, this is for you. Today, we are going deeper into how she gets hooked. You know, after that, I only look for black men because there's something, I don't know if it's our chemistry, it's the makeup of our chemistry, but I'm so attracted to strong, fit black men. Fucking them and realizing what I was missing before that um, was pretty mind blowing. And it wasn't long after that that I ended up getting my first Queen of Spades tattoo. I met this bull and oh, (laughs) Venus. He just, holy shit, he rocked my world to bits and pieces. And I finally found a a sexual partner who could match me in stamina, in virility. Like, we fucked all night. And when I say all night, I'm not talking about two rounds and then I'm, you know, he's asleep and I'm masturbating or whatever. Like, I'm talking all night long. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, I know. I know that kind of like you need an ice pack on your pussy after that. Seriously. (laughs) I need some DLC in here. Welcome to the Venus Cuckoldress Podcast, a place to learn all things cuckolding for the curious, the passionate, and the sexually empowered woman who wants it all. Make sure you go to venuscuckoldress.com to subscribe to the podcast and check out the Venus blog. And of course, if you love it, share it. Now, sit back, make yourself comfortable, and enjoy the show with your host, Venus. Welcome to the Venus Tackle Just Podcast. I'm your host, Venus. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today's episode is all about interracial cuckolding. I have talked about this on the podcast before a few times. And let me just say, for those, for those of you who aren't already aware, it's a favorite subject of mine because <laughs> it's a personal preference of mine. But I will say that Back in episode one, when I was first kind of explaining what cuckolding relationships are and what they're all about, I did mention that not all cuckolding relationships have interracial cuckolding elements to them. So bulls can be white, bulls can be black, bulls can be everything in between, and and that's entirely okay. It's just a, the couple's preference, really. I, like I said, love interracial cuckolding. I think it's an extremely erotic, sexy component, and I really get off on it. So, of course, I love talking about it. (laughs) And I have a couple of really great friends in this lifestyle who also really love black guys. That And so we're going to talk about that on the show today. We're going to talk about specifically how we got into black eyes. Like what, 
what was that process like? So how did that happen? What was it that hooked us into it? So that's on the table for today. If you're curious about interracial cuckolding or you already love it, this is the episode for you. All right, let's just get right into it. This has to do with the interracial cuckolding episode that I did, episode number six, called When She Goes Black. And for this, I wanted to talk a little bit about what it was like for me to start fucking black guys and what happened with all of that, but also to get a point of view from a couple of other lovely ladies. I have uh, Cuckoldress Anne and Cuckoldress Scarlet here to talk a little bit about their journey into that as well. So first of all, I will say that within about, I don't know, a few months of my first cuck relationship, I decided that, you know what, I really wanted to go and fuck black guys. I already had an interest in black guys because I had a really great experience with one um, months before I had met my cuck boyfriend and loved it and wanted more. Um, And so that when I met my cuck and he was like, you know, I really think you should seek out black guys. I was like, oh, yes. (laughs) But there just wasn't very many here in the city that I live. And so, but all I had to do was just put it out there that that's what I was looking for. And I ended up getting the best response and a handful of really great guys. And to this day, I'm in contact with most of them. Like they have been wonderful. That whole experience of seeking them out and then, you know, fucking them and realizing what I was missing before that um, was pretty mind blowing. And it wasn't long after that, that I ended up getting my first queen of spades tattoo. And from that point on, it was just like, I wouldn't say gradual because it didn't, it didn't happen over a number of years, but within like a number of months, I went from, you know, fucking a mixture of white guys and black guys to just fucking black guys. And I was completely happy with that and have been happy with that ever since. And so I just wanted to play a quick little clip of that episode where I talked a little bit about what that was like in the very, very beginning. And then I'm going to play a couple of clips from these lovely ladies. Here we go. It was several years ago that I first, uh, I started fucking another, another black guy and I was at a swingers party with my girlfriend that two of us went there together and it was just like all couples. And this couple walked in and she's, uh, from Trinidad, he's from Jamaica. And I remember just looking over at my girlfriend and I was like, Oh my God, who is that? (laughs) Like, look, he's so fucking hot. And I ended up coming up to him at some point that night and talking to him. And after that, we met up several times and had just like fucking great sex. Like we had awesome chemistry. And oh, I just eventually his wife was like, nah, I don't think I really want you to see her anymore. (laughs) I don't know. I'm guessing it was just she, I don't know for whatever reason. And that's, that's their thing. I mean, swingers are allowed to do that. They make the rules for each other. So I was not mad about it, but I was just like, damn, that sucks. And, um, so I, I started looking for another black guy to kind of replace him. So a few months later when I I met my first cock boyfriend and he suggested black guys, I was like, Oh my God, fuck. Yes. (laughs) so it wasn't wasn't long after that that I started fucking with mostly black guys and um and I didn't really like there was no purposeful plan at that time for me to just fuck with black guys like I was just doing it because I really liked fucking black guys and I eventually just stopped fucking white guys and and I, I will say that because like it's not something that I set out to do but I just was really enjoying fucking black guys so much more that like I had, there was just no interest left over for fucking white guys anymore. So I 
eventually just was like, you know what? I don't, I don't think I want to have sex with white guys anymore. And I, I just felt like when I fuck black guys, like, okay, how do I explain this? When, when you fuck in a white guy, it's like, if you think of like an orchestra and there's, you like fuck like maybe one or two or three players who play instruments in the orchestra. That's what it's like when you fuck a white guy. There's this little bit of variety and this little bit of talent and skill going on there. And like, it's a little bit, you know, there's some art to it. Sure. But when you fuck a black guy, it's like having the whole fucking symphony. And <laughs> that's like the best way I can ex- I, I can explain or describe it. Because like, they have this way of just like, mm, fucking you with this like confidence and like this big fucking dick. Not all of them have a big dick, but I would say like the ones I fuck with have big dick because I'm a size queen and I like that. Um, and just like this, the way, maybe it's because they have a big dick. Like they're just like this confidence, this big dick energy of just like, they know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what they've got to use. They know exactly that they're fulfilling you in the way that you need it, the way that you didn't even know that you needed it. That's how they fuck you. (laughs) That's the best way I can put it. (laughs) Anyway, um, I feel like after a while, my mind changed. Like literally uh, the things I got turned on with before was different. So now I'm like, if I see dick pics of black guys, I'm immediately just like, oh, there's this, this involuntary kind of reaction where I'm just like, oh, fuck. Like, that's so hot. If I see dick pics of white guys, I'm just like, no, no, not doing anything for me. <laughs> but I will say that because I'm a cuckoldress, I still love white guys in a way that's like in my heart. Like, I love them, I love them, respect them them so much and could never live without them. So that's, I think, what makes me different from just like a regular queen of spades, the girl who just fucks black guys. And then there's a queen of spades cuckoldress where she loves black guys. She loves fucking black guys as much as she loves a relationship with a white guy. All right, so that's my little story of how I got into interracial cuckolding. Next, we're going to hear from Cuckoldress Scarlet. She has a wonderful blog, cuckoldressscarlet.com. And her posts are quite literally amazing. So if you haven't checked out her blog, I would absolutely do so. She's really wonderful, great friend of mine. This is her story about how she got into interracial cuckolding. Okay, so uh, it's an interesting story because when I've always been what I would describe as an equal opportunity slut, like it (laughs) just didn't occur to me for a large part of my adult life to have an ethnic preference in the men, you know, that I pursued sexually or played with. Um, It wasn't until my cuck introduced me to cuckolding and he really like kind of laid it all out on the table and he explained to me you know most cuckoldresses they choose to play with black men and you know I I had slept with black men before this mind you um so I was like hmm that's interesting I'm interested to find out why (laughs) so I went to find out why (laughs) and uh I had a Bull, who there was a brief window when I first started um, cuckolding, and there w- I didn't have an ethnic, so I actually played with bulls of other ethnicities, mm-hmm. and um, just wasn't very abundantly impressed with that experience. I, I felt like there was something more to the eroticism of cuckolding that I was kind of missing out on, and I I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but. You know, my cuck kept insisting, like, I think this is it. <laughs> you know, I think that you need to be, you know, looking at black guys. And so um, I met this bull and, oh, Venus. 
he just, <laughs> holy shit, he rocked my world to bits and pieces. And I finally found a, a sexual partner who could match me in stamina, in virility. Like, we fucked all night. And when I say all night, I'm not talking about two rounds and then I'm, you know, he's asleep and I'm masturbating or whatever. Like, I'm talking all night long. You know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, I know. I know that kind of like you need an ice pack on your pussy after that. Seriously. <laughs> I need some TLC in yeah. here. Like, absolutely. And, uh, you know, it just, and then the contrast in our skin, I started paying attention to it. And because, of course, my cock loves that. Yeah. And, it just it just made sense to me. It was like I'm in this amazing relationship style where I can insist on having the best for myself. And why would I want anything less than that? Yeah. I, I I mean, not less, but other than that. You know, it's like and I get we all have different preferences, but I knew that I had found my preference. Yeah. And I stuck with it and it has not led me wrong since. <laughs> you know, I've just just grown in my sexual preference and my just love for black men. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Did you, for me, I found that like similar to you, it was my cock who, I mean, I had an interest in black guys before that. I loved their dark skin. I thought they're sexy and hot as fuck, but I never, there's not a lot of them in the city that I live in. So not a lot of Mm. opportunity anyway, but um, when I really, uh, you know, he encouraged me to seek them out. So I was like, yeah, yeah fuck. No, no problem. I'll do that. <laughs> so Yeah. Yeah. No arguments here. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, but I wasn't expecting to have it take over me so much. Like I really enjoyed fucking black guys. Like I loved it. And, and it, for me, over time, I felt like my brain actually changed. Like, I, the things that turned me on, it was more and more about black eyes. So yes. I felt like the kind of chemistry in my brain changed. Like, I no longer was turned on by like, well, you know, white guys in porn and stuff. And I was just like, yeah, no, but show me a nice big black dick. And I'm like, holy oh. fuck. <laughs> You know, like the reactions just changed like that. So was it the same with you? Like, was it just kind of like involuntary? (laughs) The same. Yeah. The absolute same. Like, it's almost spooky how similar it is. Like, (laughs) I, I, and it's so interesting where that path has taken me because, uh, (laughs) I, this may be getting a little controversial, but, <laughs> so please excuse me, but I'm just being honest and real to my experience. Like, I, um, you know, I, I think like every woman uh, who has a sexual profile, like I get lots of dick pics, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and about a year and oh God, about probably about two years into being black only. So this is a kind of recent development. Um, I started like having a feeling of literal like revulsion when I saw a white man. <laughs> like, like, oh girl, I'm so like, I know that sounds terrible, but this is just me. Like it, there's nothing about it that is appealing to me yeah. whatsoever. <laughs> so yeah, it's gone even that, that far to me to where I don't, not only don't find it appealing, like you know, porn with white guys in it or, you know, it, white guys that try and tell me it, but even like when I get a dick pic, I'm like, Oh God, yeah. <laughs> get that thing away from me, you know? And it's, it's, it's not that I'm, I'm like trying to say there's no value in that, but it's just personally not what I am interested in. And next up, let's have a listen to my friend, Anne. She's going to Tell us a little bit about what was it that hooked her into interracial cuckolding? What is the allure of black men for her? I know you're into black guys. How did that actually start out? And what's the appeal of black guys for you? The first time, there's two different times. And I, um, years ago, through the swinging lifestyle, a single black male reached out to us. And he was traveling for work. And it was more, I think we were more like hot wife, hot wife kind of couple then. I mean, we never, I hate labels, but it was a threesome situation. So 
remember we met the guy at the hotel and I write about this in one of my blogs, but he had, he was, you know, really good looking and he had just onyx black skin. He was beautiful. Mm. And I was one of my first times with a black male. And I remember, I don't remember much about the sex. James was there. He was like taking some pictures and doing some different things. But what I remember are the pictures, the contrast of my white skin, because it was pretty fair and his skin was just dynamic. And at the time I didn't appreciate what I had and what, who I was with. And it was probably, gosh, 15 years ago or something. So it was quite a way, quite a while ago. Mm -hmm. And then, so that kind of started and he got to get, he came to town one other time and we got together. And then I met another black man who reached out on a lifestyle site. He was like 25 and just kind of an old soul. And we are still good friends to this day. I mean, we haven't gotten together because of COVID, but he's black. And I just, there's something about the ones that I'm attracted to a are smart and articulate. And they have this sense of bravado where they just kind of take charge yeah. of in bed. And I just, God, I fucking love it. <laughs> and, and, you know, obviously I love big dicks. Not everyone has the same size, but how they use it is pretty incredible. Like how they use what they have. But so since then, I've always looked for black men. But in the swing community that we started, it was hard to meet them and meet them. And I remember one time meeting someone and we ended up getting together. And then there was another person. But then just over time, I was just solely black. And when, like six years ago, when we were really identifying as cuckold, you know, cuckolding, it's like, you know what, I've got to just start meeting lots of guys. I went on some different sites and I was kind of having some trouble finding the right person. Then they were all white men who were kind of reaching out to me. But I did meet somebody who was Danish and he was really cool because obviously he was from a different country, but he's still white. (laughs) But I enjoyed his company so much. But you know, after that, I only look for black men because there's something, I don't know if it's our chemistry, it's the makeup of our chemistry, but I'm so attracted to strong, fit black men. Mm. And I'm a tall woman. So having a man that's taller than me just makes me feel beautiful, feminine. Have I totally submitted? Not yet, but I may at some point. Like if I have, I've always been one to kind of control my orgasm, this is how I like it, this is what I want. But I'm getting more comfortable with just like letting go and letting them take over, you know, like, and um, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, I, I mean, everybody knows how I feel about black guys, but <laughs> there absolutely is this kind of uh, I, and I don't remember where this term came from. I heard someone say is sexual magnetism that black guys seem to have and maybe it's just a chemistry thing that you know you've got it I've got it it's something that we're just like so attracted to I'm not sure (laughs) but um could be big dick energy I don't know black dick energy I don't know (laughs) well well, that's why it's fun to be a you know to really play be a slut in this because a a slut, you know, you fuck who you want. You don't fuck everybody, right? So mm-hmm. your selective comes with the word slut. I think people don't understand that, but yeah. it does. But, you know, maybe you have the guy with the just huge dick and you just want him to fuck the hell out of you. And you're not really worried about this emotional like bond or, you know, but there's a chemistry there, but it's short and hard and, yeah. you know, you're you're filled to the brim and you know, it's just, it's great. And then there's others who really engage with you and you can, you converse and you can fuck for, you know, two hours and you want more. And so that's one of the things that James even says is astounding. is like, you know, even he and I, you know, had a, we still are very intimate in different ways, but we have a pretty, really good sex life. And for him to see me taken to this whole other limit of, <laughs> so much greater <laughs> than he, he ever had. It's kind of like, a, it's astounding. It's, I would say it's astounding in a way, but I can't imagine it any other way. 
And I think when I grew up, I didn't grow up around a lot of black families. So it, I wouldn't say it was, it was taboo. I just didn't have any knowledge of what I was missing out on. Oh, I just love how Anne describes her relationship with James. They are just adorable and they have really a great dynamic going on. For those of you who would like to read more about Anne, she has a blog as well. She's been blogging for a little while and it's on Cuckold Marriage dot info site and if you'd like you can go to venuscuckoldress.com click on the recommended resource tab and you'll be able to find the blog links for both scarlet and Anne. and if you are a patreon supporter of the venus cuckoldress podcast you will be very familiar with these two lovely ladies because they join me often for the pillow talk live cast that happen once or twice a month so just one of the many perks that Patreon supporters get for supporting the Venus Cuckoldress podcast and allowing me to do what I love so much. All right, that's it for today's episode. If you want to subscribe to the podcast, make sure you go to venuscuckoldress.com. And you can always find me on Twitter at Cuckoldress. V. That's at Cuckoldress V. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, please go to patreon.com forward slash Venus Cuckoldress. Thanks again for joining me today and we'll see you next time. I actually have no idea what these questions are, so you're going to be coming along the ride, right along with me. The show is What Women and Other Wonderful Humans Want, presented by Dating Kinky. It's the show about how people connect in the right ways. I like the way that you're, you think about this, and I was wondering if maybe you and I could create some of these experiences. And the wrong ways. Hey, hey, share nudes. Wear nudes. I want nudes. Interviews with women and other wonderful humans from many sex positive walks of life. New episodes come out every Tuesday on Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, and TuneIn. Oh, I'm your host, John, otherwise known as Hi There, Katsu. Yes, I'm a guy, but my curiosity allows me to ask the questions you want to know. So join me for What Women and Other Wonderful Humans Want, presented by Dating Kinky. And make sure you listen to the episode featuring Venus in the archive.